Hi everyone, my name is Andrew Wheelock, the Project Director of the Islands of Enlightenment Virtual World Learning Experiences. I'm a technology integrator at the Western New York Regional Information Center, and I'm part of the communications team here at the Virtual World Educational Consortium. Welcome to the first episode of Maps, Mesh, and Meaning. This series of videos will showcase educators who are using virtual worlds to enhance learning for the students they teach. The first two teachers I will introduce you to are Amanda Thompson and Jay Menzi from Cleve Hill Middle School in Western New York. Jay and Amanda will discuss the project they have been developing that helps students learn about the Holocaust and more specifically the life of Anne Frank. These two teachers will showcase how they use an open sim environment to create a powerful learning experience for their students. Let me first give you a little background about this project. The Islands of Enlightenment projects began roughly in 2012 with the support from the leadership team at the Winnerick and a grant from the New York State Department of Education. With the help of local teachers, we created three virtual world projects. One, the Understanding the Holocaust Project, the Heir of the King, which is a medieval role play, and the Learning by Design project that gave students the opportunity to learn by building about art and architecture. OpenSim is a freely available open source virtual world program that can be downloaded on a server and then given access to students through avatars. Students can interact, chat, and create within the virtual world. The challenge for teachers is often in the learning curve. Time and patience to learn a new skill are often barriers for teachers with tight schedules and busy lives. So taking on this project takes a special commitment. Enter Jay and Amanda. They decided to create a new spin to the Diary of Anne Frank project that was, yes, bold, but truly innovative and produced amazing results. Here's the story of their success. Hi, this is Amanda Thompson. I teach seventh grade ELA. This is Jay Menzi. I teach seventh grade social studies. And we're going to tell you about our Anne Frank virtual environment project where we created a scavenger hunt um, um, so that students can learn more about the people in the diary, of Ran the diary of Anne Frank. So the first thing that we created, this is the welcome area. It's kind of the, um, the central location that we have students start out, start out at. We have the um, the people that were in the annex on the wall here. This is where kids will start out. Start out, they'll get their assignments from these boxes just by <laughs> clicking on them. The assignments pop up, and we created these assignments um, specifically so students would have to stay in the world to to do them. We didn't want them to go outside and Google or, or use anything. So everything that they're discovering is is right in uh, the virtual environment. And each assignment is also tied to the English language arts and social studies standards. They vary for each assignment, but kind of uh, continue along with the same structure for the assignment. So for each, for example, writing assignment number one, summarize Otto Frank's biographical information. That's going to be the same for each of the characters so that students could kind of get a sense of who that person was before they dove into the more complex elements of each of their lives. Right. And so for the second assignment, this is where we wanted them to be able to use some sort of skill that would um, require them to be in the world. So uh, this program allows them to take a selfie at a certain location. So we had them we had them do that. Um, some of the assignments, we had them create something in world and take a picture next to it. So there was a lot of building involved. There was also um, just a lot of exploring the world to complete the assignments. Right, so once you click on the assignment or on the person, you get the assignment. And then from here, we're gonna go to uh, the wall. And on the wall outside is where uh, students will get uh, the first card that will tell them about the person. Okay, so we're going to go out into Amsterdam and this will give us the first uh, slide that will help uh, students com to complete assignment number one. So we're out into Amsterdam and students know that they have to be in period dress uh, when they are in world. There is the option to switch it and when they're in the sandbox building, which they love to do, 
Um, they can be in different dress. However, when they're in Amsterdam and in the annex, they have to be in appropriate clothing. So once you get to the welcome wall, this will give them the first um, slide that will help them to complete um, each first assignment. So we're completing the assignment for Otto Frank. So we're just going to click here. Okay, so the first piece of information is all that demographic um, info that we wanted them to record on um, assignment number one. So they're just taking all of this info and they're putting it in here just to learn some, some more things about Otto's life. Right, so they're going to take mm -hmm. all of the, the different things and then synthesize that to write three sentences about that person. And then we give the clue for the next location. So this is what they're going to look for in the next location, that he was a lieutenant in the German army. And then to do the teleport, they're going to go to the bench uh, dedicated to Otto Frank, which is right behind them. Okay. So once we walk over here. And you're going to right click to teleport. Okay. Okay. So that so, was... <laughs> We made it to our next location and we are looking for something related to um, the fact that Otto was a lieutenant in World War One. So our students will be exploring the room. Uh, and each of the locations. So in each location, students will be looking for um, the clue, which will give them the next piece of information that they need. So this is the second slide. And this one really talks about the early life of one of the characters in the, in the annex. On the assignment, students will take this. They will complete uh, take a selfie at the table. They're going to write a letter home to relatives in Germany from the point of view of Otto. So taking this information, using it to complete this part of the assignment. And then again, this has the clue for the next location. And in order to teleport to that location, they're going to go to the standing globe. In assignment two, again, it's the same for each of the characters in that it talks about their early life before they get to the annex. So now we're going to turn around and find the globe. And we'll teleport out to the next location. We'll be looking for something to celebrate the marriage of Edith and Otto. Right. So kids, uh, students will look around and find the image from their wedding day. When they click on that, they'll pull up the next card. There we go. So um, assignment number three for each character gives more about their life. Um, and this one was pretty similar, again, across the board in that, I don't know. So basically, we wanted them to find evidence. So in ELA and both social studies, um, in both classes, finding evidence um, to support a claim is, is a pretty big deal. So I wanted them to find information in here that support the idea that Otto Frank was a resilient man. Um, so they would put their answer here in the space here. And then again, they're using the next blue, a convenient way to get around Amsterdam. The teleport is to go to the picture of Anne and Marco. <coughs> So we'll look at that picture, right click to teleport, and then that will take them to the next location. And for each character, we wanted to vary the rooms that they were going to go to. So we wanted to take out, each character will take you to different places. So not every, they're not going to end up in the same room for each character. So Otto, we come outside for his last one um, over to the bikes a convenient way to get around Amsterdam. No other character is going to end up out here. And in this way, they're able to explore the annex in a really structured way, um, going from room to room, looking for specific things. Um, and it's not just a free for all. Okay, so the last assignment 
deals with post annex life for the characters. So um, describing what happens to, to Otto. Again, we're, we're working on those skills where students are able to summarize their experience. They're taking out the details that they feel are the most important. And um, in ELA, we were working on transition mm -hmm. words throughout the year. So I give them the transition words to use, uh, see how they put that together, uh, really checking on their writing skills, their fluency in writing. That's what was so great about us being able to create these assignments is that we can tailor them to the things we were working on specifically in our own classes. The freedom that was given to us was, I think, so integral to the success of our students and that we could make it what we wanted to make it. Mm -hmm. um, once we learned the program, which took a little bit of time, we were able to really tailor it to our needs. Right, and designed things that we thought were important to, um, to telling the story of the lives of these people that were in the annex. And it was nice too, because things that we focused on in class um, that Jay focused on in social studies when they read the play, we could make sure that those items ended up in the annex. Right. So <clears throat> once students complete the uh, assignment, they will teleport to the office space that we've created. So I just go to my map here. And we each have our own office so that um, students can turn in work for each of our classes. So we keep it pretty separate. So this is the office for social studies and we did uh, three of the of the um, characters. Students in. would just click on, so let's say we're doing the assignment for Fritz and they're in period two, they would just click and then they could drop the assignment right inside this uh, this box. I can show you an example of an assignment here. And that's how easy it is to get student assignments too. Um, right. So it's not it's not like you have to do a lot of labor in order to get the assignments, and it's it's very easy and intuitive once you're in it. Right. So a student did you know. All of this, all of the assignments for Fritz. Um, this is what we were talking about. With um, they had to make a snapshot next to something that they built in World, showing um, you know an object that represents Fritz's op occupation uh, prior to being in the annex, and he was a dentist. So this student uh, created you know a tooth, um, took a, a selfie next to the image, and um, just dropped it right into their assignment. And what's so nice too about being in the annex and being in period dress is that students were able to create avatars that reflect um, how they look. So um, Afshin wore the headscarf and you can see in her selfie um, that is, um, that's part of her avatar. So that students don't feel disconnected from the avatar in the, in the annex, it really is a reflection of them. Right, and we gave students some, some freedom to to um, edit their avatar even if they finished assignments early, within reason, of course. We, we wanted it to be realistic and... Okay, so we'll walk out of Mr. Menzies' office and see where students turn in my work, which is right next door. We kept it pretty simple. Andy was able to give us both offices. So students would just come out, walk next door, and... I have some pictures of the class over here, which is nice. It was homey. <laughs> and then each box has the period number. Um, the images match the images from the Welcome Center. So it's very easy to, for students to tell where they're turning uh, their assignments in. So I did four assignments. I did Otto, Peter, um, Mrs. Van Pels, and Edith Frank. And then I had an extra credit assignment uh, that students could find on the desk. So from here, you want to walk out to the sandbox? Sure. So this is where students were able to come and build and play um, in building. So you'll see just a lot of like pre-made shapes and things like that when they were really kind of figuring out how to do things. We'll see some tennis balls that reminds you of Margo, because Margo, um, one of the slides says that she enjoyed playing tennis. So I think that was an image that a lot of students 
used. And then you'll see some other things where students were building for their final social studies project um, that they ended up, then they made a copy and put it into the museum. Right. So building was, was a skill that we really had to, um, to go over and teach them how to do. Um, not, it wasn't, you know, real complicated, but, you know, that some students really took it and ran with it and, and built, some th built some things that were really um, intricate. There's some examples over, over this way. And as teachers who are not gamers, we had to learn this ourselves. And it didn't take too long to learn. Once you got going with it, it was pretty easy to, to run with it. So we had just, just like um, with our students, we had varying levels of success and varying levels of enthusiasm for the building. Students who loved Minecraft and loved gaming, I mean, look at this tank. Somebody who's not super into it is not going to be able to build that or not going to want to build that. Versus when you go to the right, there's just the picture of the tank. That might be somebody who is not super into the building. So varying levels of engagement and, and success with the building. Um, but students really did an incredible job. Yep. And, uh, you know, the building is it was one aspect of doing the museum assignment. They also had to um, do some research about the, the item or event that they chose related to World War II. And then they had to include a note card um, explaining what it was and describing, you know, how it was important to World War II, um, how it changed the, the outcome of the war, what it meant. So that was a, a major part. And I can show you some examples of items in the museum. So going back to my map, we landmarked it. Uh, the landmarks came in really handy because we were able to get to different places within world. Um, so once we got there, we created a landmark. The students just go in there. They, um, they click on whatever they need, Cleve Hill Museum space, teleport. So this is the space that Andy dedicated for our projects. Um, students were able to, you know, just directly bring their projects in here. And um, some examples about some other student projects. What I really liked about this was that our students, um, as the as the exhibit started to show up in in the museum, um, they, were, they were able to share their work and students were able to, um, to walk around and see what other students had done, what they created. They learned a lot about um, whatever topic that um, other students had chosen to, to focus on. So on, on this one, it's a, they made a, a slides presentation. So when you click on it, it actually goes through the uh, various slides. Others that created objects, let me see if I can find one. When you click on it, there's the note card. This is a, a German U-boat. Um, and it just it shows where they got their information. It describes uh, what it is, how it was used. Um, so this is a, a major portion of the, the museum project was researching this item um, and then, of course, building something that represents it. Keeping students in world, I think, had a large um, part. Of, it was a large part of keeping them engaged because they knew that they needed to to stay there. Um, but also, like it wasn't like we had to keep them there. They wanted to be there. Right, and I think that speaks to you know the generation and, and you know gaming is, is huge for middle school mm -hmm. students, and so they got to experience. Um, you know, gaming, but also, you know, I don't even know if they realize, like, they're doing some pretty intense work, you know, they're, they're having to, to go through everything, it, but it's, it was fun. I mean, I think that's the bottom line. It was really, really fun for them to be in world. I think the first day that we, uh, that we did this, I let them play. Yeah. I let them kind of um, explore and we didn't have any assignments. We just learn how to use the, the tools that are in world and navigate and look around. Um, walk, run, turn. So right, and some of them because they gain pick it up way faster. Right. Um, you know, and they and it's you can kind of have some fun with it because I am not a gamer. Well, <laughs> Shock. they are much better uh, than we are. So <laughs> and so you know, I would try to show them how to you know, go in a room or something, and I'd end up 
walking up the stairs and trying to get up the stairs for like two minutes until I got frustrated and teleported. You know, um, so we could have those kind of fun, fun moments where they were an expert at something much more so than I was, you know, and they could kind of teach me and walk me through it. And that gave them, I think, some important power and ownership of of the assignments of of what we were asking them to do because they felt like an expert at it walking in a lot of them.